Hey guys, well today we're out here in the shop and today we're going to be using the fiber laser to mark all of my TTS tooling. Now, years ago I printed out all these labels uh, to mark my TTS tool holders which worked really well I was using Cool Mist uh, for my flood coolant but when I switched over to Cool Right uh, the tools started ending up like this where the the number faded out and really the only indication I knew of which tool it was was the number up here on the uh, where I have them stored which you know worked out fine but I have uh, quite a bit of tools that I need to keep track of and it just it just wasn't uh, wasn't working out and then when you're in, when you have the tools up here in the carousel unless you really know which tool is what which you know most of the tools I know what they are if I use them frequently but still I needed to have a good indication so now that I have the fiber laser I'm going to use the fiber laser to come over here and mark my tool holders so you can see I've got this tool holder etched now still got a little gunk on there from the glue but I've got this tool holder etched and that's never going to come off it's never going to rub off a lot better and it's going to last forever now I know many of you might say well what if you want to change out to a different tool number I've had these tools for years and I've just been collecting and just adding new tool numbers I don't think I'm ever going to use this tool holder for anything else other than 45 now I may change the tool from a thread mill here to something else and recall it 45 that's possible but as long as I don't have two 45 tool holders I think I'll be okay so we're going to go out to the fiber laser I've done uh, these two and I've got it set up here to do 44 so let's go out to the fiber laser and we'll do, do uh, tool number 44 so I've got it already set up here I'm using light burn uh, light burn works, works really well especially for rotary and I just found that I prefer light burn over easy CAD it is hundred and fifty dollars for the subscription to the license for light burn but I think it's going to be well worth it uh, in the years to come so I'm I got the next number in here and uh, we're using speed of 400 and the power of 50% at a frequency of 20 Hertz so I've got it here set up in the rotary axis we're rotating this around the X and let's just mark one of these now since the last video I found that it was really dark in here especially with the garage door shut and it being winter time now so what I did was I just put a strip of uh, LED lights there I might need to add a couple of strips because it's still kind of dark in there but it's good enough for me to um, see my work so let's go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and mark this one I'm going to turn the fiber laser on here and it's going to be a little bit louder so when you turn the fiber power source on uh, it locks the rotary axis that also hooks up to the rotary axis so I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the frame here and then go ahead and just start marking Now these numbers, the, the text are 8 millimeter by 8 millimeter, and so I've got the split size for 4 millimeter, so it, it does a couple of um, turns there. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to loosen this up, and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees, and I'm going to do the other side. I'm just kind of guessing at where it is centered between those wrench points. Is that 
quick. I'm going to turn this fiber off here, quiet it down. And so there we have our marked tool holder. You can see, looks pretty good. Now, you could probably turn the number upside down because that's the way it's going to be sitting in your when you have it stored. But when it's in the machine, it's going to be right side up like this. So I went ahead and just marked all my numbers like this. And I think that's going to work out uh, just fine. All right, so let's do another. All right, guys, so here is the rotary marking uh, dialog box. So we need to set up a few par uh, parameters, one being our part diameter. Uh, that's very important. I forgot to change this when I was marking uh, one of my face mills. Now, most of my tooling is 22 millimeters, 22 and a half millimeters in diameter, but this face mill here is uh, 38. And so you can see I didn't change it, and now we have this big gap between the 5 and the 6. This is tool number 56. When I realized it, I swapped the other side and I corrected the diameter, and you can see we've got that uh, spacing is correct. You can also see here, <clears throat> excuse me, this line beside the 5, that is the split size, left that little gap there. So that's another thing that we need to take into consideration. Now most, most of these two digit numbers that I'm marking, uh, the numbers are 8 millimeters in width. And so the total width for the numbers here is about 15, 16 millimeters at the max. So I've got my split size set for 7 millimeters. And for the most part that's been falling right between the two digits and so it marks one digit and then rotates and marks the second digit. It's been working out pretty well so far. Uh, this overlap is, is how far you want it to overlap before it makes the next row. Another setting here is run hole shapes. Technically because because I'm not really marking a real wide area I could mark both of these numbers at the same time and not use the rotary marking feature here in Lightburn, but because I'm rotating in 180 degrees and I want to make sure that um, I don't want to have to remove it and put it back in, I am using the rotary marking, and I'm also, it's, it's a good learning experience marking these tools. Um, they're my tools, they don't have to be perfect, so um, I'm learning Lightburn, learning the laser, so this is all part of the process. Okay, so now that we have our settings in here for our, our rotary axis, we can also click on this run hole shapes, and what this will do is this will allow it to mark this without rotating. So let's give that a shot. I've got my current settings, a uh, speed of 400 and power of 40. I was running it at 50, but it seemed to be a, uh, a little overdone, so we're going to try it here at 40. So I'm going to fire up the laser. It's going to get... Uh, kind of loud. And then we're going to move over to the laser here. Zoom out a little bit. I really like the enclosure. It's doing a good job of keeping the fumes out, which was uh, one of the reasons I wanted the enclosure. But let's go ahead and mark this. I'm marking this at a 45 sweep and it marks one direction and then it comes back and marks the other direction. Okay, we've got this side marked. And for the next side I'm gonna I am gonna rotate it. So let's go back over and look at the setting Ooh, set up here. So I'm going to disable this run hole shapes. Now we need to rotate this 180 degrees. <clears throat> so if we go into our setup here, we can see that the circumference is 70.686. So 180 degrees out would be 35.343. So 
So right here, I'm going to type in 35.343. That should move me exactly 180. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this jog button. It's going to move exactly 180 degrees. That looks good. Alright, so now we can mark the other side. Now this time it should rotate when it marks because we're not marking the whole shape. We're going to actually rotate some when we mark. Let me get my glasses on here. And let's mark. You can see it move to rotate. It's going to do this one digit, then it's going to run uh, rotate to do the second digit. All right. Let's take that out. Let me turn this on. Okay, you can see it's not quite as dark. It just barely etched it. You can see on this one, there's no... This is the side where we did not rotate it when we marked it. And you can see there's no kind of lines or anything. That's a nice uh, mark. If you look at it, well, your lighting's not as good, but that's a good good mark. It's not indented any, so that might be a good power setting for this. I really can't tell the difference between not moving it around here or moving it around. Uh, I don't see any line. I think I've got that dialed in. So the split size was 7 millimeters. It should have been right between the two digits there, so there shouldn't be any problem there. So basically it's doing, it's marking one digit and then rotating and marking the second digit, where on this side it didn't rotate at all and it just marked both of them. All right, well, that looks pretty good for this tool. So we're going to just keep moving on and marking all the rest of the tools. Uh, I did want to show you why I was using the rotary axis. You see it's just you can put it in there one time then you can rotate it. At first I wasn't doing the rotation and so I was manually rotating each tool. But that's a nice little feature here in Lightburn. I'm not sure if EasyCAD has that feature or not but I've been working here with Lightburn and I really like it a little bit better. It's just a little bit more intuitive and a little easier to sort things out I believe that's really nice it's really dark that's a uh, 50 percent power here this is a 20 watt laser but we've got 50 percent power and you can see it it shows up really nice all right guys well that'll wrap up this video uh, just another great use for the fiber laser here I'm going to continue to work on getting all my tools marked Guys, if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in, click on that subscribe button down here in the bottom right hand corner. Also, click on that notification bell. That way when I post a new video like this one, and it's something you're interested in, you can click on the link and stop by and check it out. As always guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thumbs up if you like the video, please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.